two Americans living in Holland for a long time. Michael Moore, saxophone player. You might know him from his work with Instant Compose Pool Orchestra, uh, his beautiful band where he uh, uh, interprets music of Bob Dylan. He's going to play with also American bass player. He lives in Harlem. Paul Berner. Michael Moore and Paul Berner.
Thank you. Paul Berner, Michael Moore. Uh, we played The Gift from me to everyone. <laughs> we played Night Ride Home from Joni Mitchell. And uh, the rest will speak for themselves, I think. Crazy, he calls me.
oboe and on the bass and Michael Moore on the clarinet. Ending their little duo set here with But Not For Me. You might know it from uh, Chad Baker, this song, who fell out of a window right over there. Um, yeah, fantastic. The American Songbook. Uh, I have a lot of questions about that for Michael coming up. Uh, after this, three more duos are, c are coming up tonight. We'll be here until around midnight, Central European time. And uh, there is Michael Moore coming to us, ladies and gentlemen. We have a cold beer waiting for him here. <laughs> Michael, good Very that cool. you're here. This is your microphone. Is my microphone. That was wonderful. Is Thank you. Take a sip. Cheers. Cheers. Is the last year for you a period of extra rehearsing, extra practicing, or less practicing? Um. If you could use your mic. Yes, thanks. It's on. It's about the same, really. Yeah? Yeah. So you, you, you have me Less of everything else, but um, yeah? I'm still, um, <laughs> I, I, I do what I always do. I just do my work. Yeah. So it's not that you have musicians, they have, uh, when they have a lot of gigs, they have less time to practice because you travel a lot, etc. That's true, yeah. Is it for you a period that you uh, focused on different things or explored new territories or extra deepened territories? I've been listening a lot. Yeah? Yeah. To what? To all kinds of stuff and reading a lot also. Uh -huh. so if you, yeah. yeah, you could use the mic, yes, thanks. I'm using the mic. Okay. And reading a lot. Okay, what book is on your bed right, stand right, right now? Right now, Congo. Congo, okay. <laughs> <laughs> a terrible story about the Belgian Congo. Yeah, it is. Oh, my God. Okay. Beautiful book, though. Let's talk about the music you play, because, uh, yeah, it's the American Songbook. Can you explain to me what is the American Songbook for you? Um, okay, um, these pieces that we're playing, they're all circular harmonic forms that jazz musicians know and love. Um, I, I really like to play them as well. Um, I don't do it very often, but yeah, so this is a good chance for me to do that. And for us, it's for, for Paul and I, it's just, it's all about counterpoint. Which all these duos are about, it's just counterpoint, right? But this uh -huh. is a very kind of a specific harmonic kind of counterpoint, I'd say. Um, these, are, these are pieces that were written between uh, 1920 and uh, 1950, I suppose, except for mm -hmm. the Joni Mitchell one and a few of the things that I wrote. But yeah, just um, um, Interesting melodies and um, and um, interesting. Uh, just often, the the lyrics are very interesting as well. Sometimes they're kind of stupid, but most of the time they're pretty interesting. Are the songs uh, that you have a memory of hearing as a kid, or being so, on the radio, yeah. or in your in your parents' record no. shelves? No, well, but not for me, of course. And there's a few of them that I. I heard on the radio when I was a kid, but uh, most of them I found since then, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, this, this one piece, well, we didn't play it tonight, called Home. Uh -huh. It's from the 20s. It was written by a Dutchman who had a big band and played a lot. It was very successful on radio in America. Mm -hmm. But um, George Gershwin and Richard Rogers, and uh, yeah, that's, that's amazing music. And, mm -hmm. uh, I think this is a this is kind of a, it's, it's, our our approach is just um, two voices and um, try and stay away from the virtuoso thing, you know, and and uh, uh -huh. just kind of play, uh, make up nice melodies. Yeah, mm -hmm. is it uh, you you being American and being away from the states for a long time, living for a long time here in Amsterdam? Is it uh, extra special to play this repertoire or? Am I then being over, overly emotional? Um, I've never known or you both. to be overly emotional, <laughs> Kuhn, but uh, um, I don't think it has anything to do with nostalgia. No? Really, no. I mean, yeah, I could, I could go on about how much 
of this music is uh, based on American forms. Yeah. With a lot of the things we're hearing tonight. So um, that's, that's all pervasive. I, I, I think it's quite hard to get away from that. Uh-huh. It's really nice when yeah. you do get away from that. But are you uh, are you one of the when you play these uh, songs? Do you keep the lyrics in your mind? Do you know all the lyrics, or you keep them in mind? No, I'm not Dexter Gordon. <laughs> uh-huh. And like I said, a lot of sometimes the lyrics are not so interesting. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. How long have you known Paul? I've known Paul for maybe 15 years. Um, I was playing in his his bands. Um, yeah. um, we're both we're colleagues in Groningen at the conservatory. We're both yeah. uh, teachers there, and I'm really happy that Paul put put the work into uh, learning these songs and and finding ways to approaches that that kind of because um, with only two voices you have to kind of um, let the harmony be heard somehow. Yeah, and, and the choices of the songs had a lot to do with the relationship between the melody and the bass line, so that you could actually hear harmonies when they're right. not being played. Yeah, yeah. And uh, but it's a lot of work for him, and uh, he moved he moved some of the pieces into different keys, so that he could uh, play open strings and that right. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, make it sound better. So thanks, Paul. <laughs> yeah, we're very happy with that. Uh, Michael, are you working on something? Uh, that that we can expect from you when <laughs> when we can go see you again live. Oh my God. Um, what the one thing I haven't done is in this time is be very ambitious. Uh huh. I'm really like I'm just sort of waiting. Yeah. Um, I have ideas. Uh, there's a there's a low woodwind trombone repertoire that I would love to get recorded and played sometimes. Okay, uh, with uh, pl- you playing bass clarinet or alto clarinet? Um, yeah. Um, I might not, I might be more clarinet and alto, but the rest of the band is playing baritone sax and okay. bass clarinets and yeah. trombones. So okay, okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes I'll be playing bass clarinet, I think. So. Okay. Yeah. If... Um, if we would have to play a, a song from the American songbook on your funeral, which one would it be? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> uh, that's a tough question. I, I really couldn't say right now. Okay. We, uh, we, we, we keep it in stock. I You'll answer uh, next time. Yeah. Okay, we do I that. I think uh, on my gravestone will probably be he, he had the right of way. Hey, hard four wrong. Okay, we're gonna end with that. Michael Moore, thank you so much.